Hey everybody, it's JDV here for Evil Genius Entertainment. Today I have to announce some sad news, and that is the passing of the great Dorothy D.C. Fontana. D.C. Fontana was, uh, without a doubt, one of the most influential uh, female science fiction writers really of all time, and one of the greatest sci-fi writers ever. And that is because she was a key contributor to Star Trek, the original series. D.C. Fontana started off as a secretary for Gene Roddenberry on his original cop show, The Lieutenant, when uh, his original secretary got sick. Roddenberry, who was always a keen judge of talent, quickly realized that uh, D.C. Fontana had a lot of talent as a writer, something she had always dreamed of becoming. Um, soon she would begin... Um, writing scripts for Roddenberry and be indeed became the youngest uh, script supervisor in Hollywood uh, at the time and the first female script supervisor ever. Um, her con contribution to the series is, is, is vast. Uh, she wrote many of the episodes, including uh, Charlie X, which was actually the second episode ever aired for Star Trek. Uh, that's an episode that George Lucas borrows heavily from, or at least some aspects from, in terms of the power of the force of one's mind. Um, she rewrote uh, what many people consider to be uh, the greatest episode of Star Trek, The uh, City on the Edge of Forever. She was the first one to do the rewrite for Harlan Ellison because the first one was, I think, about heroin and you know, just stuff that was never going to make it onto a Star Trek show. She helped um, shape other writers on the show, kind of uh, told them what the, you know, the so-called Bible of the show was about, and did uh, several uncredited um, kind of gross rewrites of scripts that were submitted to the show. But beyond the scripts that she wrote and, and the influence she had on uh, other, other uh, show writers, she had a huge importance to the show in this way. She introduced William Bill Tice to Roddenberry. Now, for you non-track geeks, uh, Bill Tice is the guy who was the costumer for Star Trek. So everything that we kind of associate with Star Trek, uh, both in terms of the color schemes and the cuts, uh, the uh, both from you know Klingons to uh, the, kind of the mini skirts that the that the girls wore, uh, to Jim Kirk's. Um, kind of green shirt, you know, to using uh, all sorts of unorthodox materials like shower curtains to make spacesuits. All that came from Bill Tice, and that never would have happened without D.C. Fontana because she introduced him to Gene Roddenberry. Of course, she would go on to do uh, many other shows other than just Star Trek, uh, many of which uh, would, would influence at least my generation and, and I think generations to follow. Uh, she wrote uh, one of the the best episodes for the original Battlestar Galactica, um, Gone on Ice Planet Zero. Um, she wrote for Bionic Man, He-Man, uh, Land of the Lost, Kung Fu, and dozens of other shows. Uh, she, she contributed to um, Star Trek fandom in, in a lot of ways, um, both uh, from the conventions to writing some of the first fanzines, to actually writing an episode for a, a fan-made uh, Star Trek film. Uh, she was married to Dennis Skotak, who, uh, if you're in the biz, you know that he's a great special effects artist. Uh, he primarily responsible for the special effects on Terminator 2. DC Fontana was a big in influence on me just because I'm a huge Star Trek fan, and she... I could, you could always count on an episode that DC Fontana wrote was going to be a good one. As soon as I saw, oh, she wrote that, you know, they, well, we're going to get a good episode. So she's a great person to look at in terms of uh, both write, writing style, her imagination, and, of course, that she was a, a groundbreaking pioneer who you know, paved the way for other female script writers. So rest in peace, Dorothy DC Fontana. You were one of the best.